The weapon was the most important part of the Knights of the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages, one of the primary weapons was the broadsword. Well, the broadsword was a very heavy weapon with a shorter blade, generally with one or two, two hand holds, and was used almost generally to beat upon the opponent, mostly to dent their armor. Uh, once plate mail came out, and even with the chain mail, it was very hard to cut someone. So you hoped that you did enough damage by beating upon their armor that it would actually, the armor would do more damage than the weapon. Uh, with the broadsword, you could do a number of things. Many times they didn't even sharpen the edge because it would dull so quickly. But they could still use it for thrusting. And even with an, an opponent that was just in a light leather armor or just in a tunic, still the weight of the weapon hitting into them would, would, would smash muscles, break bones, uh, rupture your arteries. It was just a very devastating weapon to use. The other primary weapon was probably the long sword for the personal weapon. And both were used in conjunction with shields. At the same time in the Middle Ages that they were using the broadsword, the Japanese developed the katana. Now the katana was probably one of the most efficient weapons ever designed. And it was designed with a curved blade. Now the difference between the blades is a curved blade is used more for cutting. So with these kind of a weapons, which were generally held a little different than the broadswords of the middle of the European Middle Ages, these were used like this and were brought and then you would slice. So it would put a very good cut. Now it could also be used for thrust, but the tip is not designed so much for that, more for a slicing effect. Most of your curved weapons throughout India and also through the, through the uh, Middle East used curved blades. Now this was a real disadvantage during the Crusades to them to begin with because of the heavy chainmail armor. Now the next weapon that they used a lot was an axe. Now this happens to be the head of what's called a framing axe, but it's very similar to the Franciscan axe. Now many times the Franciscan axe had a, a ball or a point, or sometimes was just flat, but it was a very good weapon. It was used sometimes from a horse, sometimes had a longer handle for the use with a horse, or would use, have a longer handle for use against opponents where they could get a much, good, much longer reach on them. Um, this particular one could also be used very well for throwing. They would keep several of these stuck down into their belts or along their horse, somewhere on their saddles, and they would pull them out and would throw them. And it was a very effective and very deadly weapon. It also would break right through much of the chain mail, and uh, even the plate mail armor would have a hard time against an axe, uh, especially considering the size of the battle axes at the time that they used, which were probably about three times this size. The next weapon that they would use, and not so much primarily by the knights, but by the men-at-arms, who were not actual knights. They were simply conscripted or paid just to fight. Now this is a more modern longbow. It's about 75 years old. This is a 65-pound longbow, and it's used primarily for hunting. This was made, uh, handmade by Indians in Wisconsin. In the Middle Ages, the longbow would have stood probably a little taller than me, about six and a half, seven feet and had a pull of about 180 pounds. Uh, bows today, like this one, pull between 60 and 80 pounds. Uh, so our ancestors were pulling, pulling bows on a regular basis at three times the strength that we use today. Another very effective weapon used at that time was the crossbow. Now the crossbow generally had a, 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 a piece very similar to this on the the very tip of it, the crossbow would be put down over the foot and then you would pull the string to, to load it. This one, which is a modern 50 pound, very small compared to the two to 500 pound crossbows of the time, very easily to pump, but even at a 50 pound with a practice bow like this, as you can see, it's quite efficient and quite deadly. When the crossbow was invented, it changed the entire battle arena for the Middle Ages. And until gunpowder, it was one of the primary weapons for siege and for defense of castles. It had good range, was very accurate, and almost anybody could use it. And it didn't take that much strength, because you were using your whole body to pull the string up instead of just your arms. Now the next weapon is the dagger, or dirk. 
This is a very small one, very modern. Dirks back then ranged with up to a 12 inch blade. Now they were used for defense, as in the main gauge, which was used for very small blades and was, design, was uh, designed and uh, invented more towards the end of the Middle Ages. During the early part of the Middle Ages, they used the double edged dagger. And that was a very good weapon that was used for if you happen to lose your sword, your shield was broken, you didn't have your spear, then you'd pull out your dagger. It would fit very easily between the joints of the armor. It would slide into the chain mangle very easily. You could get it into the visor of your opponent. And anybody who wasn't heavily armored, well, it would just slice through most leather armor like it wasn't even there. All of these weapons were very efficient and very deadly. And even today are considered very deadly weapons in most places.